Good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, the Board of Commissioners meeting. Uh, we would like to begin this as customary with a moment of silence. Thank you. Please rise for a pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. We have a public comment uh, from Mr. David Weisnick. Welcome, David. Good morning, sir, ma'ams. Dave Weisnick, 14 and 10 Gap with a Back to the Gap update. Uh, as of the 17th of October, we've already had 9,211 personnel turn on the Gap. So we're off to another busy year. In fact, this week we will have over 7,500 troops personnel turning on the Gap. Uh, just finished up our Warfighter 18 exercise with the 42nd Infantry Division and the New York National Guard. They are all on their way home. Um, had a very successful exercise, and that stages us um, in the coming years with many more division level exercises, which brings roughly an additional three to 5,000 troops on the gap. So it's a good thing for the area, good thing for the economy. Uh, next month, date to be determined, we're going to have a ground bait breaking ceremony for construction for our transport center. Uh, big thing in the Army, just to expand on that a little bit. Most National Guard installations have a transport center where units from all over a geographic area come and get simulators and training aids. Fort uh, Indian Gap and the Pennsylvania National Guard is one of two National Guards that actually have a geographical authority or mission. Um, we have one, hence we're getting a much larger, larger transport center and we're getting some military construction from it. But that's a big mission. Um, our area that we're responsible for is our great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania with many, not only National Guard, but Army Reserve units that are gonna come to the Gap and get the, draw their training aids and transport, but also we're going to cover down on the great state of West Virginia and also the northern half of Maryland. So that's kind of a, a, a big thing for us, an activity that we do uh, uh, makes Fort Indian Gap what it is, is a, in a lot of ways a national asset to our Department of Defense. So I always like to put that plug in so um, our citizens of Lebanon County know what a mission we do over there and the importance of it. Uh, prescribed burn season has kicked off. Um, that's going to run through about mid-November. With that said, today we're going to prescribe burn 25 acres. Our prescription burning program is critical to the, our diversity of our ecosystem. But more importantly, it protects our neighbors by it takes away a fuel load where if we inadvertently set off a range fire, it stays on our property. Um, have a very highly trained forestry, wildland, fires crew, um, probably some of the better ones I would dare say in the state from the amount of fires that they handle. Uh, all notifications with the local fire departments and various stakeholders are given before we go into one of those. Uh, lastly, Sally will be glad to know uh, for as far as a live fire exercise, which is loud, uh, 29th of October through the 2nd of November and that's when we're going to shoot artillery and mortars. So, um, we appreciate everybody's patronage on that. And lastly, hunting season is under swing with the archery season. Um, we have already harvested 67 deer from the Gap. That's good archery equipment, so we will go on with that with a, a 
a great harvest. If anybody is interested in hunting on the gap, we have a fully automated system which gives the safety briefing now and allows you to go ahead and buy a 40 to 10 gap hunting permit. Um, best place to get information is at this website, bigftig.isportsman, you spell that I and then sportsman.net. Um, that will lead you to a site where you can accomplish all those tasks and become a registered and safety breed hunter on the gap. Other than that, and pending any of your questions, that's all I have. I was going to say, I, I know um, Jeff several years back I organized a tour and this was before your time but there were a lot of the um, simulators in like truck boxes were they all becoming inside with the expansion some of them are um, with the expansion it will store a lot of those components they're very digital automated down um, you said this gives us a place to get them out of, the out of the weather and, and sustain their lifestyle longer. And in addition, this building is going to have more and more classroom or simulator space so we can move some of these simulators that we run now in the trailers, we're going to be able to run them indoors. So um, very versatile space for us and, and with the complexity of the simulators that we have, it's it's much needed thing for us to build. I was curious about that because as you say, electronics are sensitive to moisture and it, cold. Oh and yes, ma'am. They're highly computerized and um, you know it'll be much more efficient for us to keep them in there. Yes. yes. Uh, you have a forester on staff? Thomas? Yes sir. We uh, have are you aware of the uh, spotted lantern fly? Oh, yes, sir. We just oh, had our right. environmental briefing mm -hmm. to our chief staff yesterday. Um, that was covered in detail about the encroachment of the, the insect. Um, they're very much even going through and developing as sightings of of that species gets closer, um, what safety procedures we're going to put in, uh, even for units that are going out in the field and training, uh, what would be our reaction to obviously get them to check their vehicles before they leave. So, are you aware that Berks County is having a, a workshop and having <coughs> federal and state? I believe we're going to have attendance at at that workshop so the, we real closely coordinate being a governmental agency with uh, we're, not, we're not going to be able to uh, the commissioners are not going to be able to attend that because it's during our budget process right but uh, would you uh, have them keep us informed I will ensure sir that they are going to attend that or we're going to have representation at that and we certainly would be able to get you some notes for what they say. Um, What's the name of the end? It's the lantern spotted, uh, spotted lantern fly. Fly. Imported from China. Thank you. <laughs> My wife is still dealing with stink bugs. Oh, no, me so, too. And she's from Allentown, but she yeah, moved away before the stink bugs came, and that's the big issue with her. So I deal with that. <laughs> I, that's what I tell her. Gordon has a question. Yes, sir. Dave, can you tell me anything about uh, the uh, dimensions of the project and project cost of this transport center? I will, would rather get you the exact numbers so I don't get misquoted on the, the particular number, but um, it's a considerable project that's kicking off um, in the millions, obviously. So we can certainly give me your email. We can get that to you. Sure. Between the VA investment and the investment, the county is really a great. Uh, it it, it this, it's a definite economic driver. I mean, it, last economic study we have uh, <laughs> done with our just our economic value yearly to the gap is five hundred million dollars. I mean, that's that sneaks up on a lot of people with the magnitude of that. 
David, is 7,500 getting close to your max for a number? That's pretty much about every bed we have on post will get occupied that night. So. Sounds like a big number. But that is a normal course of business for us, and it's like I tell a lot of um, people that are area merchants and, and in business, it, the gap differs from an active army installation or um, by the fact they do business Monday through Friday. On a guard installation, we start spinning up on Thursday already, Friday, Saturday is the very heavy day, Sunday they prep to go home, and Monday is when what we call the trail party, that's full-timers that come and turn equipment. So it's a, a little bit different of a cycle that goes on, but that's a lot of people to manage is when you get up to those levels. But we've been doing it for years. So well, thank you for the updates. Thank you all. <clears throat> Mrs. Newen with our treasurer's report. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, good. <clears throat> oh, sure. Um, we'll uh, first adopt the minutes from our last minute. I make a motion to approve the minutes as printed. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Post same sign. So moved. And before Sally uh, begins, would you like to introduce your guest? Sure. Yes, actually, I would like to have Sarah tell us a little bit about herself so she can be recorded on the record. Uh, my name's Sarah Moreland. I'm a senior at Cedar Crest High School, and I've been my job shadow. And I've been on majoring in political science or government next year, so very grateful for this opportunity. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. All right, now, Sally. Okay. <clears throat> we have receipts on October the 17th and 18th of $2,836,752.85. That brought us to our total cash of $3,355,000. $111.77. Our expenditures this week were $3,113,192.62. Our undistributed tax claim of $9,622.93. So we have a balance of $232,296.22. A second to approve the uh, treasurer's report as presented. Any questions? Any comments? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign, so ordered. Thank you, Sal. Sure. Second, are there any questions or comment? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, right. same sign, so moved. Moving on to FMLA and leaves of absence, Beth Ann Bates with Community Action Partnerships, four to six weeks leave of absence, effective September 13th. Good. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve that leave of absence. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so moved. Under changes of status, transfers, and promotions, Yvonne Munez changed the status from General Clerk C in the Clerk of Courts to General Clerk C slash interpreter in the Clerk of Courts at the rate of $832.22 biweekly plus $57.69 biweekly for interpreter pay effective October 9th. Vinochka Ayala changed the status from part time clerk, 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 excuse me, court clerk in the Clerk of Courts to part time court clerk in the Pathonotary's office, no change in her rate effective October 23rd. 
make a motion to approve the changes of status as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions? Comments? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. So moved. Under other transactions, the prison would like to hire Caitlin Dardis as a full-time LPN at the rate of $16.83 per hour, effective October 23rd. And Renova would like to hire Antonio Ruiz as a full-time developmental assistant, second shift at the rate of $11.56 per hour with a $0.45 cent shift differential, effective November 2nd. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. So moved. Moving on to salary board, a motion to approve all the transactions previously read plus the following two corrections. Jeremy Wenrick and Timothy Quinlan, both telecommunicators and EMA, both incremental increases a correction in the rate to $18.01, both effective October 8, 2017. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve those uh, changes and adopt the uh, previously agreed to uh, uh, Changes, yes. Uh, the motion is second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. So moved. The mandated conference seminars, Tyler Steinsnyder from Children and Youth would like to attend the following four trainings. In-home safety assessment and management in Mechanicsburg, November 29th, 30th, and December 1st. Mileage meals, tolls, reimbursement, 18 credits mandated by DHS. And using interactional, interactional helping skills in Mechanicsburg, November 15th, 16th, and 17th. Mileage meals, tolls, reimbursement, 18 credits mandated by DHS. Introduction to PA Child Welfare System in Mechanicsburg, November 1st. Mileage meals and tolls reimbursement, six credits mandated by DHS. And identifying child abuse and neglect in Mechanicsburg, November 8th and 9th. Mileage meals and tolls reimbursement, 12 credits mandated by DHS. Robert Southerly from Children and Youth would like to attend supporting caseworkers and using critical thinking skills in Mechanicsburg, November 22nd. Mileage meals, tolls reimbursement, six credits mandated by DHS. Thomas Smith from Children and Youth would like to attend Child on Child Sexual Abuse in London, October 26th, $20 total registration fee, mileage reimbursement, four credits mandated by DHS. Marie Hernandez and Nicole Rua from Children and Youth would like to attend the Lost Grief, Dying, Death, AIDS, and the Substance Abuse Training in Mechanicsburg, November 14th and 15th, mileage meals, tolls reimbursement, 12 credits mandated by DHS. Anna Marquez from Children and Youth would like to attend Endings and Transitions Managing Staff Retention in Mechanicsburg, November 8th, Mileage, Meals, Tolls, Reimbursement, Six Credits, Mandated by DHS. Sharon Gassert, Marjorie Ulrich, Janine Mauser, and Angelica Parisi from Children and Youth would like to attend the Regional Convenings for Act 33 Terms. In Mechanicsburg, November 3rd, Mileage, Meals, Tolls, Reimbursement, Six Credits, Mandated by DHS. Crystal Weedman from the DA's Office would like to attend the PA DUI Association Annual Meeting in Seven Springs. November 6th, $275 total registration fee, lodging meals, tolls, reimbursement, mandated by PA DUI Association. Brandy Poole from MHIDEI would like to attend the CPR and First Aid in Lebanon, November 9th, $45 total registration fee, mileage reimbursement, four credits, <coughs> mandated by Octel. Samantha Light from Probation Services would like to attend Back from the Brink in Mannheim, December 8th, 7.5 credits, mandated by PBPP. Dawn Hooten from Probation Services would like to attend a growing concern child on, se on child sexual abuse in Lebanon, October 26th, $25 total registration fee for credits mandated by JCJC. And Dwight Penberth from Probation Services would like to attend the Essentials of Supervision at State College, October 19th, $50 total registration fee. Meals reimbursement, six credits mandated by PDPP. I'm sorry, I believe I'm missing one other one. Um, Daniel Marshall is also supposed to attend that training. I'll make a motion to approve the mandated conference attendance as presented. Second. Motion and a second to adopt the, uh, accept the mandated uh, seminar request. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign, so moved. 
mandated or requested conference seminars. I have Teresa from Osmond and Deanna Basher from Area Agency on Aging would like to attend Protective Services Regional Meeting in Gettysburg November 2nd with mileage, meals, parking, and tolls reimbursement. So Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve that request. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so moved. Brianna Spangler from EMA would like to attend the Mental Health First Aid in Mount Gretna November 9th with meals reimbursement. I'll make a motion to approve the EMA conference attendance. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so ordered. Daniel Hall from ITS would like to attend the PMP CAPM exam prep course online beginning October 26th through December 14th. $1,100 um, course fee, no other reimbursements. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve that IT request. Any questions or comment? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so moved. Michael Anderson and Joel Son for voter registration would like to attend the ABCEP winter meeting in Wyatt Missing December 7th and 8th, $100 total registration fee with mileage, meals, and parking reimbursement. Make a motion to approve the voter registration conference attendance. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 For a safe sign, so moved. Thank you. Thank you. property 
within a local taxing jurisdiction rather than limit the exclusion to one half of the median excess value of all property which is the existing law. Thank you. So that is the that help with your Not everyone gets the papers. I understand. Yes, and we do have uh, those that that question along with the English statement in our office for anybody that wants to review that. Thank you. Commissioner Phillips has a question. Sure. Just um, since you're using the, the sun as part of yes, the, are you allowed to use the merchandiser uh, which would have more coverage so and uh, um, maybe be a little less expensive? Yeah. The answer to your question is no. Uh, we researched that uh, last November. Uh, we had solicitor uh, Kate Warner uh, check that for us because they do not qualify. The election code specifically says a uh, newspaper and describes what a newspaper is in the election code. Um, he did some research for us and that does not qualify since uh, it's a free yeah, It just seems like it's a, I'm going to ask it every year because as the, as the uh, newspaper circulation diminishes, yeah. And, and the cost doesn't, it, 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 it goes up. Right. So, um, you know, it's one of the things you'll see in my budget that, you know, th this will be a very expensive public notice. Uh, I suppose uh, that the, the issue with the merchandiser is that it's not a subscription. Correct. It's not a paid That's for, and therefore does not qualify as a And we can't yeah. use radio. Correct. It has to be in two publications, two newspaper publications. Correct. That's what the election code is about. I can tell you that there's been discussions uh, the Department of State um, been trying to have that looked at um, with the General Assembly. If, uh, you know, trends continue in the publishing industry, newspaper publishing industry, and uh, say the Eleven and Daily News were to go to three days a week in a Sunday paper, uh, what would you do? Uh, consult our solicitor. It is the Reading Eagle would cover the other end of the county. Yeah, account. I know that we have used the, the Patriot News in the past uh, for just. Patriot is not uh, a, week, a daily either. The frequency uh, doesn't matter. Yeah, I think it's yeah. the fact that it's a newspaper, a paid subscription newspaper of general circulation. Well, then the da then then the question about the daily news. It would be fun. Is yeah. is there a, I mean, especially. Those of you who get to northern Pennsylvania, a lot of areas that are only covered by weekly newspapers. And, uh, so the frequency isn't the issue; it's the paid. It's the paid subscription that the merchandiser is not. Do you know if that changed? Because that used to be part of the reasoning that we were given. No, I think it was always the paid, the paid part. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think it matters how frequently it. But the frequent, it doesn't. It doesn't specify daily. It's, it's, General newspaper of general circulation, and it must be a paid. I'm not sure what the, you know, the, reasoning or the logic behind the paid part is. But. Thank you. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the advertisement as presented by our uh, director of uh, voter registration. Uh, and we've had uh, significant uh, discussion. Are there any other questions before we uh, call for the question? All right. That said, all those in favor of approving the uh, advertisement indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Your advertisement is approved. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. And I would call for a motion to adjourn the Board of Elections. Second. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Introducing yourself and then go ahead. For the sake of introduce yourself. I am George Christensen. I reside at 341 South Tall Street. And uh, I'm here on behalf of a property owner's district, uh, Ron Dix and Mr. Gellner, and Bordnerville Properties, applying for a LERDA application from the county for a property which is on Bordersville Road. I don't know if you can see this, but it's a 32-acre tract. This is the new Forge Road that comes
comes through the development, and this is Borders Mill Road. This is abutted by the interstate and Borders Mill Road, so it's basically a very isolated piece. It is 32 acres and is anticipated that there will be placed on that property a 400,000 square foot uh, facility. The property has been certified by the township as LERTA eligible, and the matter was then taken to uh, the township, and they have approved it for LERTA, as well as Northern Lebanon School District. I have prepared a petition or a resolution for you. The one that I gave to Jamie is correct. However, I have attached to this one the map together with the uh, final description for the 32.925 acres. You provided a map here also. Oh, did I yeah. put one on that? I yeah. uh, That very simply, the specifics of this LERD application are similar to the other ones, but in specificity to the issues which were raised by the county commissioners. Uh, in paragraph 3C, so long as the exemption granted here under is in effect, applicants shall not file an appeal from the assessment of the properties contained in new construction. I will tell you that the assessments on new construction, generally speaking, from the assessment office have been $25,000, $25 a square foot. So the assessment on this property will be approximately $10 million. It has not been assessed yet, but that is what, based upon the, the last assessments that I've reviewed here. Um, what is anticipated here, there is not a present tenant. The present tenant that looked at is a national chain. Um, I can't tell you because there is no signed lease at this point in time. Or I had, although I don't represent any of those people, I represent the people who own the land. Uh, I have had conversations with them in regard to it. Um, this property at one point, uh, there was a ball of jewelry store back there. Probably the last jewelry store in the township. Which will no longer be there, but it hasn't been there for the last 30 years, although the sign is still above the shed says Ball Ball's the old store. Now, if somebody here bought from somebody from Ball's, I used to work for the National Bank of Lebanon. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have in regard to it. George, who's the, the builder? You're, you're actually working for who, the builder. Who is the builder? It's the same builder which built the other property which we talked about the last time. Um, it is uh, Centurion out of Baltimore, Maryland, will be the builder. And he Smith built, is the owner. He yeah. built, right. He built 400,000 square feet, which was completed. <laughs> Uh, the only thing that has not been released from that bond to Ellen, there is a basket. I think about $15,000 for trees or something of that nature. Yeah, it's about that, yeah, yeah. around that number, but the rest of it has been totally completed. Is so that building occupied? It is not occupied, but according to my conversation with him last week, it is supposed to be occupied on the 15th of January. They do have to release these are questions. George, you did not mention a uh, specific use for this, and I'm assuming that's because uh, you, you don't know what tenant you're going to have in there, but can I assume that it's a, a warehousing type organ? It will be a, a it, yes, it will be a warehousing. However, it, at this point, it might well be production. Years ago, I had a builder warehouse down in the east end of town. And very simply, while it was a warehouse, it also housed Pacific Coast Feather, which employed for 15 years uh, about 
70 people. It's that general type of operation which is set to be contemplated at this point in time. I do not, there is not a lease on it. The only reason I know that they talk to me about that kind of situation. Thank you. Yes, sir. This property, this 30 acres on Warnersville Road. Yes, sir. Do you have any idea what the selling price was from the original owner to this concern here? Yes, it will be on record. It is five hundred thousand dollars. Five hundred thousand. Yeah. And they also add um, utilities like water and sewer and roads um, to the base price that he pays full taxes on from the beginning. That's correct. Yes. Anything from the township? No. We good? No. Okay. We'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. I'm sorry, opposed? Yeah. Aye. Thank you very much. Jamie, if you need something else, please let me know. I would like to. The motion it. carries. We have a split vote, but. Uh, uh, no, I just didn't like to explain my vote. And uh, I don't enjoy necessarily being in the dissenting side of these issues. Uh, I just think that things are out of sequence. Uh, solicitor in that if we're asked to make a vote on alerta we should know who the occupant is and what they're actually going to be involved in as far as the trade and so on and the kind of jobs and the salaries of the jobs because that's an important part of the, the piece and uh, th this idea that we should approve alerta on something that's going to be built and have no idea that there's any commitment by a business or whatever to move in there and as indicated uh, by when I asked the question before we approved alert before and that building still isn't occupied so um, I don't know if we can change the process towards uh, so that I would we can get a commitment the process and I do understand your comments <coughs> quite frankly I think the whole system is out of sync because when I built my 400,000 square feet, there wasn't any alert. So I think it's personally out of sync. But be that as it may, with the present tenor of commercial development and commercial understanding, I would love to be able to do that. I don't know how to do that. I'd be more than happy to discuss it with you. I think the whole learning situation is where it is. Uh, I think there are different philosophies. I believe Myers down Grove is taking that philosophy at this point in time. It, uh, it, it should be discussed in toto rather than individually. But I'm here for this project and I appreciate it. No, as, as uh, I know, I indicated to Commissioner Phillips when we were. Uh, at the uh, Ace Hardware uh, open house up there. I think it was the Ace Hardware. Uh, or no, it was when they were discussing it. I had voted against that one and I said, had I had all the information about Ace Hardware and what they were actually going to be doing, I would have been willing and able to vote in favor of that word. So it, it, does, it does weigh on me and, and make a determining factor as to how I vote on these. So. For what that's worth, I at least want it to be on the record. I'm, I'm not opposed to the concept. I just want to be sure that we're getting a good deal. Because it is it is a lot of money uh, put off. So, thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that some other time. We'll sit down and go there. You're done with it. You're done with attorney criticism, right? Yes. OK, on words. And it has nothing to do with you. You're, you're the middleman. Okay, you're the middleman. Okay. On words, I can't get alerta. Uh, do I think I should? I should have one. Yeah. Why? Seniority. My people came here 300 years ago and settled this whole valley on my mother's side. I can't get on farm preservation. I don't own a farm. I wasn't lucky enough. My old man didn't leave me a 150 acre farm. Can I get them clean and green? No. I don't own 10 acres. And my four little tomato plants this summer did not yield $2,000 or more in agricultural products. I can't get on any of that. I was just informed 
North Lebanon Township, I'm going to have another tax put on me, a small one, three, forty dollars for stormwater management. Okay. People ask me, what is stormwater management? I said, it's rainwater. Rainwater's been taking care of itself from day one on this planet. It seeks its lowest level, unless you dam it up. But what is the bottom course is the Chesapeake Bay. We're all gonna pay to clean up the Chesapeake Bay. Am I polluting the Chesapeake Bay? No, I'm not. Who's polluting the Chesapeake Bay? The farmers. Here we go, but you can't say not the bots of farmers. According to you people, the farmer was put here by your God. They are the steward of the land. So they get a break. They're polluting it, but I gotta pay to clean it up. On and on and on. There. That's my checkbook. I'm holding them like this because it's smoking. Let me read. Well, we, we already had the public comment. Let me read. Uh, $392. $414. My furnace puked. Taxes. I'm going right down to pay the last installment. Four fifty nine. My dog my garage door opener puked. I had to put another one. See the hits just keep coming. And I'm what's known as a senior citizen on a fixed income. Now hopefully I provided for I and my wife. But now you get this and this and this. We got a, a senator in this building. Won't mention his name, his office is here. I see it's election time. You can always tell election time because now you had a column that long in the Patriot paper. We gotta reform property tax. We gotta do away with it. But what did he do? He all these energies he expended to do what? Legalize weed. In my lifetime, I'm never going to see the eliminator of property tax, Phillips. Now, do I look like an angry old man? Yeah, I am angry. Because, you see, the middle class is just getting screwed and screwed and screwed. And this guy comes in here, and they get almost tax-free for 10 years. Uh, something's not, like he said, like George says, something's wrong here. You see it? And by the way, me sitting here running off the mob, I did it for 15 years. What did I accomplish? Zero. But I study history, and it's coming, people. One day the commissioners, about 30 years from now, are going to be hanging out with light, them light posts out there. But whatever. I'm just an old man that likes to run off of the mob, right? Problem is I got an intelli I got an IQ of 138. I'm out of here. I have a provider agreement um, given to me by Jim Poultry for children and youth, and this is a revised provider agreement with the Avanco um, for the uh, administration of the child accounting and profile system, which is a statewide program. This um, agreement was was revised with CCAPS oversight several months ago uh, there was a, a breach of the system um, on the inter on the web and um, while they were able to sort out whose information was breached and notify those people in the event that anything came of it they uh, went back and revised the agreement with a banco to provide more protections notifications uh, in, in, the, in the way of power outages uh, any suspected breaches just basically beefed it up so that um, if anything like that happens again, it's not, it's not done that afterwards. It's something to be dealt with. So I need that approval. Each county in the state has this agreement. Again, CCAP is the one revising on it and uh, sends it along with the recommendation that the county's approved. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we follow CCAP's recommendation. Any question? 
I have a resolution uh, which uh, Dave Warner just discovered yesterday that this is needed by the title company representing the county in the purchase of 217 East Wideman Street, which was approved several weeks ago. Uh, this resolution is authorizing the purchase and authorizing me as signator for any uh, documents to settle on the property. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we put the paperwork for the Wideman Street property. Any questions or comment? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so order. I have a proclamation for Casey A. Enler, Troop 415 in Cornwall, who is receiving his Eagle Scout Award and will be uh, recognized at his Court of Honor ceremony on October 21st. And he earned this, he, his project for the Tour of His Eagle was building and installing bat and bluebird houses for the Clarence Shock Memorial Park. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Second. We have a motion and a second that we approve that we'll get the scout to the proclamation. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Those same signs, so moved. Is he here? Uh, I'm going to look out of those. Okay, I was going to say, because I have something upstairs. So. Oh, that's what I was going to vote. No. That was Casey Long, who was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that too. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said her the first I name. I, that went through everybody's <laughs> mind. Yeah. I wonder why. <laughs> 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 okay. 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 Yes, um, over the years, people have asked about a county flag, and um, I had researched it. Uh, actually, I discussed it with Kathy over the years. Rosemary Swunger tried to get one, different ones, and um, I finally just thought, I think what I will do is work on this. And I, I played around with it, and I brought along a sample of what I did. And, um, Essentially, thinking back to the bicentennial, there was a, a nice design donated to the county by a student. And in paint, I was able to do a little bit of um, alteration. And so I came up with a similar but modified design um, that just took off the 200 years, took off the 1813 to I mean, to 2013, and put established 1813 in the center. And this is what it came out like. And um, there's some expense involved in developing it, but I was able to work with someone to get it done. And I thought I would bring it to the county and ask if there was any interest in adopting it, perhaps as an official county flag, since uh, the county has some a fly coat, for instance, that we can, and this is just a sample. They can be double-sided, thicker, they can be larger, they can be little garden flags. We could offer them for um, sale eventually if we would order a larger quantity, the price would come down, and we could get them for the Historical Society, the Tourist Bureau, the uh, Farmer's Market, maybe the Chamber of Commerce, anybody who might have an interest in helping uh, to that businesses and schools and others have these flags for their flag poles to fly underneath the American flag, possibly underneath the Pennsylvania flag. And so I thought I'd bring it and share it with you and see if there was any interest in adopting the, the logo as a, an official flag for the county. Uh, I certainly uh, appreciate it. Efforts. Uh, the, uh, the the emblem that that we're using, uh, I think, has some merit and consideration. So I wouldn't be prepared to necessarily adopt uh, this today. But uh, I'm not necessarily opposed to the idea of the official flag. So. Mm -hmm. My way again would be confusing the public uh, because. About a year ago, Kathy talked to me about, you know, maybe 
uh, we should have one for the county, an emblem, a, you know, something that would be identifiable as ours. And so I went to the Historical Society, and they are investigating the you know, history of the county to see if there was one adopted in our history somewhere prior to all our memories. So I would not want to confuse things by having the one Bill's talking about, the one that maybe will come forth from the county and then this one. So I'd, I'd rather not uh, decide that today. Yeah, I had I had asked about this more than I think Commissioner Litz, you had these. Uh, yeah, similar to what I did with the flag, I had those made. And, and, and I think this has been a Used long enough. It's our it's used on our uh, logo. I believe it's the part part of the county uh, the seal is part of the state, state. seal, yeah, yeah. and so it looks like a lot of other counties. And I thought this one, this design, was more uniquely ours. And I also went online and did some research of all the um, county flags within the state. And you can do a Google search, and they show up rather quickly. Um, and I. I think that this is something that would stand out as uniquely ours and at the same time be tastefully done. Obviously, using the good days and just altering it somewhat. It might be demeaning to the groups that we have found before us that have adopted such a, uh, uh, a logo. If there is one, I'd rather exhaust that effort that's required to be taken underway at the Historical Society and see where that leads. I had stopped at the Historical Society earlier this week, and they hadn't had time to do any research there, so maybe they'll do it up again. But uh, they did They did try and research it. Or they didn't have time to research it, is what I meant to say. So we'll consider it after we have these other thoughts resolved. Okay. Yes, Gordon. <laughs> um, I've been a resident of your county for a long time. I have never heard a soul ask about a Lebanon County flag. And why does this pop up in this particular time as a thought? Again, I had people come to me and say, I know businesses who are interested in displaying their county pride. And is there a flag available? And I said, you know, you're about the 10th person in the tenure of my commissioner uh, to ask about it. And when someone, when people, different people ask that, uh, that there's a sincere interest in it. So I just finally thought, okay, it's been on the back burner long enough. And I played with it uh, in order to produce something that I could share and give um, some visuals to show. Run the idea of the flag. I can the flag. Good one. Good one. Yeah, Gordy, he always comes through. <laughs> okay. He's on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sure. Let's do the window. <coughs> <coughs> Pat Salmon from Honeywell and Bob Breslin will be here shortly. Bob was uh, at the prison this morning. He's, he's wearing his project management card. Um, he's down every two weeks, Jamie, and sometimes every three, and he meets on the project to update on the project and keep everything in mind and such. And um, we wanted to dovetail this in. And why we're specifically here, commissioners, to talk about the windows, to address the windows. Thank you. If you'll recall, well, thank you. I mean, if you'll recall, when we did the original project, we had uh, there it is. Thanks, Bob. Oh, I gave them the intro and said you're dressed for work. Yeah. Um, Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Bob Breslin. And if you recall, to reconstruct quick, we, we had looked at windows as part of the performance contract, and the economy wasn't there with the savings paying for them. We then advanced the program. You approved it. And Commissioner, you were kind enough to enlighten us. There's a local vendor here that manufactures and such and meets certain requirements. And, 
veterans' business and such, and we said, absolutely, we can check. And we did, and uh, that was back in June and July. We had some emails coming back and forth, and what we found out was there, there were some errors in the information that was originally provided. Uh, we did some, Bob and Anil went through, we met with them a couple times, really took it in depth almost to an investment grade on it. Uh, good news, bad news is, good news is we were, we were bad news is we were correct. They will not fund themselves based on, on savings alone. The good news is if you decided to ever want to do the windows, we could work with this vendor and you could do them, but it would be a bigger avoided capital savings rather than an energy savings, which is what our initial thoughts were. So that's the extent of, of where I'm at. If you want more detail, I think Bob would be happy to jump in and tell you what we found out and why and how and such. But we did want to come back. Yeah, I personally would like, you know, a bird's eye view kind of summary um, of how long it really would take and what the overall cost would be. I'll take it in steps. So everything comes down when you look at it on the energy efficiency is what's your cost? What's your savings? When you look at it as a efficiency measure. The second type of project is, as you come through, a capital enhancement, capital improvement project, where you're taking capital dollars to do a project that is on the books to, to be planned to do. So you have two different pieces. On the energy the side is the former. Correct. Mm -hmm. So on our side, looking at on the energy side, is what kind of savings are realized and how does that go towards a, a project cost? So savings that are realized for the windows is about maybe it's I'll round it to six thousand. It's like fifty-seven, fifty-seven plus dollars. So it's six thousand dollars per year. Per year, six savings. Which would be savings issued to the windows. Okay. Now where some of the misconception I think on the window side that was discussed was numbers that the window um, gentleman was using. He took numbers based on what the utilities were for before the last project was completed and all the buildings combined, which included the um, prison. prison and Cedar, that which is even it. part of it. So okay. when he took a look at what kind of savings could be generated based on what you would say, yeah, you're going to save maybe 10%, 15%, he used it on a bigger benchmark than really, I think the gas along here is only close to $7,000 per year. So the savings that we're seeing is uh, between electric and gas, probably around that marker of that $6,000 of savings where he was projecting that there'd be savings almost so exceeding $35,000 per year. Now when you look at raw cost, and, it, and this is just taking what the window cost is without even management or markups or anything, Raw cost, you're probably three hundred fifty thousand plus just with raw cost. But what word are you using? Raw. Raw cost in the sense Material. of what? What would his? Okay. What would a vendor's cost be without bidding it, uh, putting in a management fee, or uh, you know, if you would like to do it directly, advertising it for bid, just what that cost is. So if you take that cost with the six, you're at sixty plus years of a payback. 60 years, wow. Yeah, 60 plus. That's a lot of difference. Seven years yes. that we were told. That's a whole lot of difference. Yeah. So we, we sat down with him. Uh, I, I met him uh, and his team at his shop, you know, to go through an understanding. He actually, I know Steve was out here before. He's behind oh, you. Yep, I'm here. <laughs> he, he actually came over with his team to um, measure and take a look at the windows. Uh, I made sure that they had all the staging protection involved that would be needed so so that's when we looked at it as to how we were looking at the project on the energy side uh, it, it matched up to where it looked at for phase two uh, and in the previous times that the project was always looked at for the windows so that was a that's an amortization on the raw cost deal right? correct what 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 is installed cost you have any sense of what it is with you know yeah so so a couple of things that we ran into is um, you know we would make sure that somebody was to be able to be bonded and I know on his side uh, with his business set up he he would not do a bond uh, for a project so we would have to either do something different or you know bid it out to people so that number could go up but that 300 number 
you know, if it's going up into, um, if you're like a 470, you know, if you're a 450, 475, by the time you put in all your general conditions and items, you know, you're there. So if you threw another 100, you're taking a 60 plus years, adding another 30 years. You know, yeah. 30 years. Yeah, and that's almost the numbers we used when we back when we did our original survey. So fair enough. There was nothing deceptive here. It was just the information that they were basing their thoughts on was erroneous. Best way to put it. And once we dug through a little bit and filled the only back out, we identify. Yeah, the, right. co the costs were pretty much similar to what the raw costs were. I, I'll call it hard costs. Everybody has a different definition, but um, those costs were similar and. I think where the difference is, is assumptions and projections that he was calculating things on was not really what uh, what the county has seen up to this day. So he took numbers based on all buildings combined before he did energy efficiency projects. And then as you've been doing projects moving forward, you've been reducing your energy consumption and your cost. So those numbers keep getting driven down. Right. And how, how much more can we keep tapping into say? In other I'm, words, the efficiency and the cost of energy now, those two combined, have already driven the cost so low yeah. that when you take on a, an additional project like this, you just have a longer payback. Yeah. So if you went back to, say, phase one, it would have helped a little bit more, but the county has been a good role model moving forward through the different things that we've done. And you should have started you, with them in this, right? In, no, <laughs> that's still what have changed. Well, at that time, they weren't really that bad, too. So I mean, that's true. Changed. Now yeah, we have two in this office under payout. That's, 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 that's like, you would have had more to work, but you, in, instead of a 60 or 70 year, maybe it would have been a 58 right. year. It, it wouldn't have made much of a difference. Like when uh, it's not raining, you don't have to fix the roof. Right? <laughs> you really have to fix it when it's raining. Well, I'm disappointed we can't get new windows. I'm, I appreciate these statistics so that I can understand why you're saying it's not 60 years is a long time. Um, or so is 100 years. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, if we get a hundred, half a million dollars, that's what it, you're saying would take to replace those windows because I can see it as a need. I, I, what I would, my recommendation to the county would be is uh, the windows is something that uh, there's various grant programs that come around. That's something that you would take a grant program. You can keep us informed of those. I'll, I'll, I'll backtrack that. What you need to do is take a look at a priority list as to what the county needs to do. If there's windows, and I imagine there's other things in the county. A grant program comes around that could be related to something similar to that, that would be a candidate for it or for other things that can't have Okay. Thank you very much. I, I really do appreciate the, the solid information. Well, and I will before Bob goes, the project we have at hand right now is going very well. Cool. The bonds are sold. Pardon me? The bonds are sold. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he's stating that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a, a question concerning the lighting. Yes. Because uh, it spurred my interest the other day when the guys were in here changing these out. So I asked a couple of questions and I understand that we're going now with no ballast. Correct. And a direct wire uh, to one set of sockets and the other sockets cut off. And uh, I have some buildings of my own, so I'm interested in doing a conversion. When I called the local electrical suppliers, they had some concerns about, at least the person I spoke to, about the the uh, 120 volt going directly to the rather flimsy fluorescent sockets that we've been using for a lower voltage over the years. Is there any concern? I know, I know obviously it must meet code or we wouldn't be doing it, but yeah. is there any concern for that at all? Now the components, what you have, keep it simple, is uh, right now you have this light fixture up there that has a ballast. Everything comes to the ballast and feeds through the lamps. When you do the LED, you can either put in a, a new ballast, you know, if the ballast is outdated or old, you put a new ballast in, and let's say you had four lamps in the fixture. So those four lamps work off the ballast. If you have a bad ballast, four lamps don't work. Some of the new technology, when you work with um, vendors and manufacturers who have invested a lot and have the, the proper product, 
they have what they call a, an inline ballast. It's actually built into the lamp. So what that does now is it eliminates the ballast, which is typically on Steve's side or like JJ over at the prison. You have a bad ballast, you have your facilities team going out replacing the ballast. Now what happens is you remove that entity now that you're just dealing with lamps. Uh, so if you have four lamps and if one has a bad ballast in the lamp, one lamp burns out and you still have three lit. Uh, and you come back. The tombstones that are changed out, we never came across where there's a, an issue or problems with that. I think it's a matter of there's so much LED product that's out there that's coming from overseas and coming to different areas that you need to make sure that you're working with the right right components. And what, are what brand are we using here? The, the lamps that we're using is called Revolution, which is probably up on the high side of being out, like their lamps right now have 10 year warranties where others are still five and seven years, but Revolution has been on a great side of the market. So Sylvania and Phillips are on the back end of this, I guess. They're there, it's just a matter of who, who we run across. We haven't had no issues with, with Revolution with the product. We, we've used Sylvania and Phillips at different areas uh, on projects, West Coast or, or East Coast. And the tubes, the tombstones, by the way, folks, are cloth the sockets. They're shaped like a tombstone. And they're all new. They're new that are being placed in. We're not using the old ones. Oh, you're replacing the sockets? Yeah, they're all they're all replaced. Okay. So that might have been the concern. You That's a good thing, right? Yeah. That might have been a concern. Are they about. are they actually sturdier than the, than the ones that were? Tombstones. They're probably like taking six quarters together, like they're small. Yeah. Uh, and then they're just screwed in, but they're, they're all brand new, and then all the wire harness is coming back that brand new. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And I think you're gonna be, you're planning to be finished earlier than expected with the yeah, things that were flowing construction, here. keeping it short, uh, you know, schedule was originally planned out going into June of 2018. I believe we're probably, talking with Jamie, we're probably targeting like in February, uh, if we're pushing the, Majority of the work is going to be probably completed by the end of December, but going into February, closing the project out. So we're, we've got a good jump on mechanical work. Okay, I talked to JJ yesterday. He's as cold as JJ gets, so he's doing fine. He's got plenty of retirement. And I don't, I don't think, Steve, you're you're fine here. Or yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's good. And to that end, I love before I leave, I've said that before. I think the advance in the schedule <coughs> is in no small part based on the operation. My name is Jim Dunmore. I'm the director of Lebanon County Drug and Alcohol. I'm Michelle Allen Switzer. I'm the Lebanon County Prevention Coordinator with Compass Mark. I'm here for two reasons, uh, and I have one. The first thing I'd like to go over with you folks is the contract amendments. I presented a copy of the sheet that has three contract amendments on it. Uh, I will go over each uh, contract change. The first one is the provider's fire tree. The facility is Conewago, Indiana, and it's for adult rehab. You'll notice uh, the original rate is NA because we did not have a contract with them prior to me being here today. 
So this will be a new contract, and the rate will be 175 a day with no contract cap for this facility. Uh, the second one is Pyramid Health Provider. Uh, the facility is Quaker Town, and the service is rehab short term for adolescents. Uh, just a side note, there is three facilities in the state that deal with adolescent <coughs> for treatment. So it's very important that we have a contract with an adolescent provider. Uh, their initial rate last year was 222 a day, and the new rate is 250 a day. So it has increased. And then the final contract amendment I'd like to present to you is for the RAISE project, and that's for our Suboxone and the North Team program. We have a cap on that uh, project. Our previous cap was $21,082. And I'm here today to ask that that cap be doubled to $40,000. Uh, the reason being is the $21,000 serves four uh, clients in Lebanon County. Uh, if we double that, we'll be able to serve eight clients. And there is a need, a waiting list for clients to receive that service. Where that money's coming from, I was here last week, as we all know. I uh, talked about an STR grant that we are getting out of the county, and the $20,000 will be coming out of that grant. So that's the statewide extra money? Statewide, $133,000. So 20 of that I would like to apply to this service, because it is an MAT and it is allowable by DDAC. How many are on the waiting list? Currently three. Three. There's a motion. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any other questions or comment? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All of them. Opposed, say no. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. The second thing I'm here for <clears throat> is Red Ribbon Week 2017. The goal of Red Red Ribbon Week is to increase the awareness of problems caused by alcohol and drug abuse. The Red Ribbon Week has come to symbolize a person's individual commitment to leave, living a drug and alcohol free lifestyle. This year's theme, and we have we have bracelets here to hand out for those of you who won. This year's theme, this year's campaign theme is your future is key to stay drug free. With this theme, our office along with Coppa Smart, our prevention provider, we're promoting an overall healthy lifestyle where children and parents remain active and drug-free. This year, our office has purchased 11,000 of these bracelets. The idea, of, and that's what we purchased last year, and what happens is Compass Smart, our prevention provider, goes into all the school districts countywide and presents these to the children. Uh, we believe it's not only educational, but we also believe the earlier we plant seeds in the young folks' minds, the better off they'll be as they go through adolescence and become adults. What I'd ask the commissioners to do is I'm requesting that you declare the week of October 23rd through October 31st as Red Ribbon Week in Lebanon County. We may have a proclamation to that uh, extent. Okay. Uh, as always, I want to thank commissioners for their support, not only in my office, but also the support of this specific Red Ribbon Week project. Okay. Uh, we, my co-worker Josh Mountains has contacted the schools and he has distributed a lot of these Red Ribbons already. Um, we have quite a few and we also have programs set up. Um, I will be at Henry Calc Elementary School on Friday and Monday of next Monday and Friday of next week to do presentations for each and every classroom in the school from K-4 through 5th grade for about half an hour to each class. Um, and we're also doing a presentation at Palmyra Middle School. These are the two schools that we currently have things set up in to do the presentations. Good. Just, to, just to note that we do offer that to all school districts, all classrooms that we would present this kind of information and that's mainly done by her. Oh. Can you talk to the uh, population? 
Sure, whereas, <coughs> whereas the Lebanon County Commissioners are committed to promoting a drug-free lifestyle in Lebanon County, whereas the Lebanon County Commission on Drug and Alcohol Abuse is distributing red ribbons to schools, churches, and businesses in Lebanon County as a symbol of each person's personal commitment to a drug-free lifestyle. Now, therefore, we, the Commissioners of Lebanon County, do hereby proclaim the week of October 23rd through the 31st, 2017, as Red Ribbon Week in Lebanon County, and further encourage all our citizens to unite and help in Lebanon County become a drug free community. I'll make a motion that we adopt the proclamation for Red Ribbon Week. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comment or question? Turning none all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Close same sign is so ordered. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Okay, you're all set. Okay. This is a bit of a combination um, of kicking off our county uh, campaign, but also to um, share some news about this year's campaign, which is unique, uh, and also um, Kenny's handing out. But before we get too far afield, would you mind introducing yourselves and we can go from there. Bob Hoffman, uh, campaign chair, United Way. Who is your Who's other guy? Who is the other guy? Kenny Montego with United Way. Very good. You may proceed. Thank you. We, we appreciate that. We know your uh, schedule is very busy. We appreciate your invitation to share just a few minutes with you. Uh, the uh, commissioners and, and the county have always been very supportive of the United Way. And uh, I know that all three of you at, at some point have served on the, on the board as a liaison from the county. We appreciate that very much. Uh, the campaign is underway. Uh, our goal is uh, $1,750,000. Today we have a first report meeting last Thursday, and we were at about 350,000. So it's very early, uh, but uh, it, it, we have a lot of uh, hard work ahead of us. I think. Um, you know, the uh, this year has been very unusual with all the national disasters that have occurred with, with the floods, et cetera. And uh, I, I know that we reach out uh, you know, to all people in those regions. But you know, we also remind folks that the needs here in Lebanon County are great. Uh, and so we hope that uh, you know, people will uh, continue to support us in that regard. Um, and as uh, Commissioner Phillips indicated, there are two things that are very different this year about the campaign. Uh, first, I want to say that the overhead uh, of the United Way has always historically been uh, very low, and certainly low relative to the uh, typical overhead of other nonprofits. Uh, having said that, uh, through the generosity of Fulton Bank, uh, the Bear Corporation, Butler New Scope, and the Dixon Foundation, uh, we're happy to tell the community that this year the overhead is completely uh, covered by donations from those four organizations. So what that means is that every dollar that is donated uh, goes directly to programs None of that goes to overhead. Uh, the second thing that is new this year, it's it's not new historically, but it is new for the last five years, is that this year is the uh, uh, year where we did our needs assessment. And we do that every five years. It's a very comprehensive program uh, with uh, a lot of input from community uh, folks and organizations, and we've had focus groups and community town meetings and what have you. And uh, this was done in conjunction with state and uh, we now do have uh, the needs assessment uh, in hand. Uh, we shared that in our report meeting last week and we have them here to share with you this morning and uh, I'd like uh, Kenny to uh, share some additional thoughts about the needs assessment. Yeah, thank you. And I just, I just want to read a quick statement that I think just consolidates uh, the why and the what of the needs assessment. Um, First and foremost, United Way is pleased to present the 2017 Community Needs Assessment Report. We first would like to thank our United Way building blocks that Bob mentioned, who together underwrite a significant portion of our administrative costs. The more than 1,700 community residents that participated in the survey 
the organizations that distributed the survey, to the clients seeking services, and the individuals who participated in focus groups, the members of the advisory group, and Penn State Harris Group. Uh, we had uh, our community conversation um, throughout 115 community leaders representing government, private industry, nonprofits, um, a plethora of services in our community. Um, we really dove deep into some early indicators um, and also provided some direction for United Way as we look to, um, to, to spearhead some of the solutions to, to the issues present in this needs assessment. Every day in Lebanon County, we see development and growth. This includes new housing construction, growth, and infrastructure improvements, national employers relocating to the area, a general reduction in crime, which I think is very positive, and many other positive trends. However, significant needs do exist. Nearly 45% of our children live below 200% of the poverty line. That's countywide. When you look at the city, it's over 50% of our children. Of our three and four-year-olds, 64% don't have access to high-quality early learning education opportunities, which is a direct indicator to school success um, and also a preventative measure to really some of the issues we see later on in, in teen and adolescent um, behavior. Um, we also have a higher share than the state of, of non-high school graduates here in Lebanon County. But with this report, United Way sought out to identify these and other indicators relevant to the health and well-being of our community's most valuable strength, our people, our community. Our goal is to provide the community with an up-to-date, accurate collection of data reflecting both the needs in our county and the barriers faced by members in our community in accessing services. And I think this is important here um, because there is a number of indicators here. This isn't a full report, um, but it must be noted that these indicators aren't mutually exclusive. They're interdependent and interrelated with one another. And I think it's important that we look at it in a holistic approach. Um, and as a community, begin to work collectively and collaboratively in addressing some of these solutions. I just wanted to take just a moment, and um, I will not review this whole piece with you, but I wanted to take you to page 18, where it talks a little bit about poverty in our community. Uh, and on page 18, it's 11%, you 11.3% know, live in poverty. When you take, you know, that when you increase that to 200 percent of poverty, which is that self-sufficiency, um, it's almost 30 percent of our county lives below self-sufficiency. Uh, when you look at our unaffordable housing in Lebanon County, almost 30 percent, might be even just a hair over 30 percent, live in unaffordable housing situations here. And I think when we look over then to the unmet needs identified by the 1,700 folks, and we see that dental insurance and dental care is number one and number two. And United Way, in partnership with uh, Walsh Mountain, uh, helps support uh, 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 the, the, the almost said free, but it is a, a significant um, reduction in cost access to dental care through Lebanon Regional Health. Um, but we also see finding a job is important, health insurance and transportation, affordable housing, and food assistance counseling in the town. So, I, you know, our, my, one of my questions is, if if we were, as a county, to reduce poverty in Lebanon County, would, by extension, we reduce the need of these services or, or the, the barriers that the individuals are to face accessing services? If we can help raise a family out of poverty, um, will that come with insurance? Will that come with access? Um, to other services that, that jobs and careers um, provide for our community. Uh, there's another, I think, important statistic in here uh, of the many, um, and that's you know, 581 reported uh, child abuse cases in 2015. This is a, a staggering number for our community. I know there are many individuals working to not only relieve the, the, um, the stress and, and, and the issues persistent in that population, but also decrease the number of cases. Uh, when you look at the number of uninsured children in our county, uh, there are five municipalities here in Lebanon County uh, where over one in four kids doesn't have access to health insurance. Uh, and so, you know, United Way uh, feels that these issues are for the community to have and, and be aware of. Um, and so we plan on in 2018, throughout this year, 2018, Holding additional community conversations to really dive deep into these issues and um, develop community-wide 
goals that we can address collectively and collaboratively um, so that you know we can reduce the number of, of people living in poverty and increase graduation rates and, and others. But we want we want those solutions to come from the from the community, from its leaders, from its experts, um, and, and certainly not from, from my my team, my staff. We just want to be there, be the conveners of those conversations and those solutions. Uh, but we present this to you today. We you know, it's, it's our hope that other organizations across the community, not just partners of the United Way as, as regarding funding, but for anybody use this assessment to you know, write grants, to hold community conversations, um, to really look at, at the issues persistent in our community. Thank you. I just want to comment that along with the underwriting of the overhead, I mean, that's to me historic because that's been a barrier to some giving. Uh, but if you take that off the table, and now you have 100% of the money going to the agencies after they've been well vetted by community panels, and you're tying the tool here to the agencies and, and challenging them to work on these. I, I mean, it, it doesn't get better than that for the donor uh, to make have clarity and, and confidence that they're giving to a uh, purpose that's going to have, you know, have results for our neighbors. So that's why I thought it was important. And we're always working at the county on increasing participation. Um, and so this is a, a, probably our best year as far as having some new things to sell and to um, be proud of. And uh, Bill, did you, as a liaison, did you want to, this is the fun part for us, trying to figure out what we want to do to help bring attention to our campaign. So. Well, be before I get into that, I. Uh, at the United Way board meeting this this morning as the liaison from the county. I commented on this particular publication and how relevant the information is. I, I, I know there have been things like this in the past, but this uh, assessment uh, booklet is valuable, I'm sure, to United Way and to the agencies. But as someone involved in local government, as I read through this, there's a lot of things here that have impact on the decisions that we make. So uh, I again want to reemphasize and thank you for providing this, and, and it is valuable. As far as uh, encouraging folks here at the county uh, to participate in the United Way Drive, uh, we've uh, had some discussion as, as a total board, and we have a little bit of uh, difference of opinion, but. Uh, Commissioner Litz, I know, was surveying the community uh, last evening and, and came up with some su suggestions. And, uh, uh, some of them are obviously worthwhile, but uh, uh, would you like me to indicate what I'm willing to do at this time, or do you want? Well, uh, as a preface to that, <laughs> we, we want to acknowledge Bob Hoffman's okay. fifth uh, time as, as chairman, volunteer chairman representing the hundreds of uh, volunteers and the thousands of donors that are part of this network. But we wanted to present this um, for your good efforts on behalf of all of us, and uh, thank you. And it may have a bearing on what we're coming up with today. That's why I wanted to insert that right now. So thank you very much. We'll give that to you. I also had a comment on the community needs survey. Sure. I thought it was very well done, but I don't, uh, I know anything can be interpreted many different ways. And for instance, the children uh, that were reported as abused, our Children and Youth Service does a wonderful job. Um, in fact, all of our departments do wonderful jobs in addressing these as they come forward. Uh, we are not letting them go undone. They investigate, they are under very strict rules that they have to follow, and they're on top of it. So I, I want to make sure that there's not a misperception that these children are not being helped. They are. Um, perception. Yeah, no, that's correct. And I think that's a valid statement. And, uh, you know, it's no surprise that Lebanon High School has the highest dropout rate in the county. And, um, and, and you know, they're looking at that and they're like, see, see, Lebanon High School. Lebanon High, there's so many positive things happening in Lebanon High School. It's amazing, and, and I believe we're both alumni of Lebanon High. We're proud of our school. I live in the city, and my taxes go to support Lebanon High. But I think it's just important to just state the fact. The fact is, you know, they have the highest rate. This number of children are 
you know, abused in some way. Um, and, and it's not a blame game. But, but when we talk about solutions, we want children to be at the table. We want other providers and SARC at the table to say, okay, well, these are issues that are persistent. And how can we help reduce them? Um, with respect to the 100% giving, you know, I think that's phenomenal. I'm, I'm so very proud of our partners, our long-term partners who stepped up with multi-year gifts to support this. You know, United Way is a global organization, but what sets us apart from nearly every other national or global organization is that we are autonomous. We are responsible and led. We're responsible to Lebanon County, and we are 100% led by Lebanon County. We have a board of directors, 36 members strong of our community who make all funding decisions and all impact decisions. Um, and so while we're part of a global association which has its benefits, um, you know, we are a 100% locally governed, locally uh, focused organization. So when a donor or contributor or an employee gives to United Way in Lebanon County, 100% of their funds, unless they're designating it elsewhere, go to support our residents here. And I, I think that's just an important distinction to know. Um, you know, we're not funding research. That's important, but, but you know, in another state, you know, we're funding uh, direct services for our community here. Thank you. Well, we'll talk about quickly, um, maybe we'll be developing this as we go, but uh, Bill, would you have? Well, we had talked, uh, two years ago, I think, we did the, had the pie in the face thing, and it was uh, very popular. Se seemed like very well received, <laughs> for whatever reason, yeah, fun Commissioner that. Phillips and I, people like to put uh, pie in our face, so uh, I, I think that's a viable uh, choice, and I'm going to leave that out there on the table as a possibility, and uh, I would be willing to, rather than just one person have that opportunity, I would like to open that up to five of our donors and what we do, we do this by lottery. It's not how much money you give, it's if you give, you're eligible to get involved in this lottery process. And I would like to offer uh, on my own uh, uh, dime here uh, the, the opportunity to go to lunch with my wife and I to those folks that would choose that option, so we would take them somewhere. So they could either pie in the face or lunch. Or the lunch, yep. do, Okay. I'll do the same thing. I'll do five, so not, because that way we have more energy uh, in, you know, for participation. So that's, that's good. That's a good compromise. These would be locally made pies. <laughs> they're, they're very locally made. Uh, our ladies from the Human Resources bake them on site. <laughs> yes. I would like to offer to uh, take, I was thinking one, but okay, five, I'll have to work on my budget, five um, of the people to lunch. And also I would like to then encourage a conversation on how we can improve county government, whether it is through services or cost savings, and bring that back to a meeting for possible implementation. And I cannot take credit for this. Um, particular presentation because I did do a survey of my own to find out what would be meaningful to people because I think it's important to get feedback and input and um, that is one of the suggestions that had merit and the other one was that um, I would be willing to volunteer to go to one of the 22 funded organizations and provide a half a day of service whether that is serving a meal at Lebanon County Christian Ministries or running a bingo game for veterans at a comp here or helping a scout troop to earn a badge um, or the YMCA, whatever it would be, um, th leaving that choice to the person picked. So the five that are chosen could have that option versus the pie in the face for me. I prefer not to, to do that one. We have our... Uh... You know, standard set 15, we'll have 15 winners instead of three, so that's a nice, so Miss Jane wants to have be another five, but uh, uh, he's a very popular target, and, um, but no, we'll go with 15, and, and under those combinations, we'll communicate that to the uh, employees and, and try to get some energy into the campaign, and we can bump that participation number up a little bit in light of all the good things that we've got for our future. So thank you. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it very much. Thank you.
this should be displayed prominently at the United Way office. Uh, but thank you for your five years of uh, volunteer chairmanship. Thank you. That is a record. I don't think it will ever be repeated. Well, if they ask me to do it a sixth time, I'll have to do it for the nurse doll. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you much. <coughs> Are you here for the our meeting? How often do you have these meetings? We have them uh, first and third Thursdays at 9.30 in the morning. When's the next meeting? First uh, Thursday of November. 9.30 in the morning. I'm sorry, me sorry. November 2nd. 9.30 in the morning. Yes, sir. I have plenty of grievances concerning the emergency management administration that overhandles the dispatching of the police department. I'm finding it virtually impossible to get police assistance. Before you go ahead with your um, remarks, would you introduce yourself? My name is Kirk Gosher. I was born in Lebanon June 13, 1963. I've been fighting with the city police for three years concerning the goings-ons of my mother's house at Second and Lee. She's lived there over 50 years. I understand culture change. I understand culture clash. What I don't understand is a complete lack of respect for my mother. I've been fighting tooth and nail, trying the right way, the right way, the right way through the police for three years. It's come to the point where the last time I was over there, I got my skull busted open and my face turned purple because I got beat up by three guys because I was trying to get respect for my mother's house. When the police show up, I'm always the bad guy. I don't even go over there anymore. I went over the other week to cut my mother's grass because I can't visit her at her own house. My own mother. I try to cut the grass, I go out and see what's going on out front, and the neighbors have her railing dismantled. Now, I don't understand why I can't get simple humanity from the government. I just want someone to take care of my mother's property. When I call the police about the cars parked illegally and everything, just to get a a start on it. If they start ticketing cars, maybe they'll stop doing it. I argue and argue and argue with every officer under the sun. I go to the lieutenants. It doesn't do me any good. I argue with the dispatchers. It's not their problem. I get arrogance and condescension from them. And people Bob Dowd telling me I'm threatening his dispatchers taking on the role of a lawyer, saying he knows exactly what I meant by my words. I would love to debate Bob Dowd on that point. I would crush his arguments in a matter of minutes. Now, I'm very hot-blooded about this because my mother is in the equation. My mother. No one seems to be willing to understand that. Every police officer that responds takes the one instance that I'm calling about and doesn't understand why I'm getting so overblown about this. That's been going on for years. And I can't stay at my own mother's house anymore. I can't even visit her. Excuse me. Um, we indulged you a little bit. I, you indulged me plenty, I know. But you, you indulged me very much. And I didn't mean to go off on so many tangents. No, no, it's not the tangents. It's we just would, been building up so much. Yes, we would accommodate you at the, at the next meeting with the, uh, we have a, at the beginning of it, we have public input. And, and I'll, I'll try to be a lot more. But we do have, we have some people waiting for our yes. next part of our meeting. And so I, I didn't even mean to talk at this point. I just wanted to see how things operated so I could be more properly prepared. Okay. And I, let my emotions get the best of me again. If it won't happen again, I apologize to everybody. Okay, thank you. I will see you at the next morning. Thank you. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, we'll do adjourn.
stand adjourned. Thank you.